computer. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 7th, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, it's Wombat. The Wombat. Hey, right. Larry, which in, episode at the which episode is this? This is 362. 362. We'll 365, and then maybe call it quits. I think okay. Okay. seven years of, of this is, is good. Good history. We got we one always... episode a day. We got an episode a day. <laughs> yeah, for a year. And uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Nice. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. I would guarantee it. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, what's our topic today? There's been a change in plans. And I want what? to talk about Ooh, yeah, what? there's been a change in plans. Also, the universe is ending on Monday. And uh, apparently, <laughs> oh, let's see. I think there well, was it's just earth. the earth, just the earth. And atheism <laughs> is just about bashing God, you know, some good classic questions or hating God, yeah, yeah. One or know. hating God too. Whatever God focused, yeah. Christian focused thing you can skew atheism into. Uh, where to begin? You know what? Let's take a step back and just say, hey, I'm always happy to talk to you, my friend uh glad that you're doing well did you get did you get the second surgery by the way did uh you get the other on my other knee yeah no okay. no I, i'm gonna put that off as long as i possibly can my you're gonna ride doing, or diet yeah fairly well right now uh, nice nicely i do the same thing with dental work by the way i always say like oh this is a massive hole in my mouth i'm just gonna you know i'm gonna ride it out i'll just try <laughs> <I'll chew laughs> on the other side uh uh-huh. I'm waiting yeah. until I can just take all these teeth and just replace them with like a replaceable set. And then I just get new sets every couple of months. Oh yeah. My, my brother did that, but he was in his sixties. I think when that happened. Okay. Can't wait for it. Can't wait. for no, it. Remember, these no, days. No. Remember these days, remember these days. Uh-huh. But, uh, let's see. How you been Larry? It's good to catch up with you. Uh, doing pretty good. I've been playing Jedi Knight, uh, the original one fallen order, fallen order. And then I've been playing uh survivor. I finished it and started it again. It, it's a really good game. I highly it recommend it. Oh, it is. It is. Especially it's the if best. You, you're into the Jedi's or the, the Star Wars movies. I like the Star Wars video games more than the Star Wars movies. I think the latest video game that came out, the last two, have a better story. Yeah. And like yeah. world. And you get to live them. I mean, you're the yeah. protagonist. <laughs> right, right. And you're Which not trying really for cool. an hour and a half where you have to like stop the movie to yeah. use the bathroom. You can like let them yeah. sit idle. And just I'm gonna use the bathroom, he comes back, he's still in his ship. You're totally fine. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 he's got some really incredible moves, you know, for a Jedi. Sure does. Yeah. I also like the voice acting of mm-hmm. uh, the villain in the first game. Like uh-huh. the performances are very good. Um, there's a Jedi master, uh, well, I don't want to put too much spoilers, but like a failed Jedi master named C, I believe her name was. Uh Siri. Siri, Siri, mm. who's played by a very skilled actor. I think her name is Deborah Wilson, who used to be on Matt TV as like a comedic actor, but has done yeah. drama, has done horror movies since, has done some directing. She's just so talented. She does mm-hmm. like she's the face of like now uh the Suicide Squad lady. She's done Jedi work, she's done voice acting work, she's just everywhere. And it's always good to see her because it's always like a mark of caliber or talent and, yeah. and and, and, and yeah. they're very talented they're talented and it makes for a great game yes talented makes for a great game you should watch it it's good and, and the have... sound and the music you know the yeah. sounds sometimes they're i very... just watch the cutscenes on youtube there's like channels that will just take all the cutscenes compiled sure. it'll mm-hmm. be six hours long but i will watch that in the background and just think to myself this is like this should have been a movie or a Netflix mm-hmm. special or something. And you're telling me I can play that? And so, yeah, I had a lot of fun yeah. when I went through that game. I I was surprised how how active it was because I didn't realize how big the yeah. world was. I thought it was just going to be set piece, set piece. But it was yeah. like, no, it's a whole Metroidvania. You can come yeah, back. And, and I usually don't like third person. I usually don't like, you know, seeing myself in the screen. I'd rather play first person where I'm, you know, it's first person. 
But on this one, you get, wouldn't get to see his moves. <laughs> right. After you're playing first person. He's got okay. some incredible moves. No, that's true, 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 true. It yeah. get me really tired. Mm -hmm. uh, as speaking of good moves, I'm I'm getting better at rock climbing. It's, it's one of the things that I'm loving to do. See here's some calluses uh -huh. for you. For the radio listeners, I'm showing a handful of little brown marks on uh -huh. yeah. And it's been fun. I've been climbing now for about a year. And I've finally gotten to the point where I can walk into a gym like my local gym uh, and systematically take off every single route that is on one of the segments. It's no longer just, well, I can only do one of these because I'm only good enough to do the first one and that one. And I'll just redo these. But yeah. now it's like, I'll go in and be like, I'm going to do all these. And I do them all yeah. except for like maybe one or two. And I'll try and yeah. do it. I'll be like, I got like 95% of the climbs done. And the only reason why I had to go home was because my arms are fried. But like, if I was fresh, I'd probably be able to get that one too. Sure. And it changes like. Do they have like diamond courses and stuff? They do. <laughs> like they in do. skiing? No, they totally do. And they're color corded or numbered appropriately. Mm -hmm. They go from zero all the way up to 14 uh, for, for lead climbing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can go from, from zero to 14. I can hit tens on my first time, like wow. anywhere 10 below I can do out on my first time but 11s take me some time to work because it's exponentially harder yeah. and so when you think about that like Olympic caliber is like 14 I'm not getting close to the Olympic I have no uh, goal or, or or dream of getting that level but I would like to go into a gym and just say oh I did all the reps today and I, that would make me feel so good yeah. if I well, can get close you'll to make that. it I'm sure I appreciate that I appreciate it, Larry uh, later today I plan on going roller skating uh, I am enjoying the uh, car that I got. I got a recently new car. Yeah. yeah. Um, the whole thing with the car is it's way more interested in keeping me alive <laughs> than I realized my old car was. So there's a lot of technology they've been putting into these things that I haven't, I haven't been privy to. But mm -hmm. and they, the thing was, it was never sold. When I bought the car, I bought it online. So I didn't really, I just wanted to make sure it was like all wheel drive and had like some core functions. But I didn't know about does it talk to you? It does. It does. It, it's very You've left specific. your door open. That's not smart. It texts smart. me. It texts me on my watch. It's like, by the way, you left your engine idle for 20 minutes or your door's unlocked. We locked it for you. I'm like, did a human do that or did my car do that? It's like, wow. my car. I'm like, that's weird. That's yeah. cool. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, uh, every time I'm driving, I'm learning something new. And I've had this car for about a month. And every single time I'm in it, I'm learning like some weird new function. There's a function called auto hold that will automatically depress or press down on the brake whenever you're in stop and go traffic it'll oh, just yeah. make sure you don't drift and i thought oh that's so useful i had no idea i had that button because before i would always have my foot on the pedal and my yeah. leg would get tired um sure. but now the fun thing for me is i was i was taking a friend of mine to go play disc golf this week and we get to the parking spot I open up the car and my 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 car freaks out. It's like close the door, close the door. I'm like, okay, I close the door, and next thing you know, a car comes, oh wow, sailing right next to us in the next parking spot. And if I had my door out open, he would have crushed the door open. And I'm like, what? what did it did it sound exciting and urgent? It was uh, it was a pleasant ding 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 ding. I was <laughs> like, oh what? Okay, I'll close the door. It's like close wow. close driver's side door. I'm like, okay, I closed it um sometimes i leave the sunroof open it's like hey the sunroof is open closer i'm like i appreciate that it's really nice <laughs> though, um yeah. how how smart it is it's nice to um how do i put it have someone else watch you in the event that you had a plan but the, the car has a different plan for you and its plan right. is to be safer for you well cool um, i did want to talk about change of plans though change of plans yeah. whose plans what plans everyone's plans it seems to be something that we don't like like we don't like change. Yeah. Would you say you like change, Larry? Generally, no. But I'm a progressive, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a conservative. I don't. I don't dislike it that much. Okay, social you know? change. You're for it. Social change. You're for it. In certain directions, I think that uh, change will make for a better planet, and we need to leave some of our baggage behind. You yeah. know, some of the old stuff that serves no purpose anymore. I agree. I think that's useful. I think even beyond change, diversity is good just to have mm -hmm. different perspectives in there, including, right. including in my mind, even like religious and non-religious perspectives. But the, the idea, the key to that is to have all the different religions or like a lot of different religions in the same room 
because when it's just one religion in the room and non-religion in the room, then it becomes as almost as if it's like two equal standards, right? Where it's like, well, you use science, but I pray to my frog god and everyone else prays to my frog god. So therefore, these are like two equal measures. Like, no, you need to uh -huh. see the people who pray to frogs. You need to see the people who do that weird stick thing. You need to see the people who do the weird, like, and then realize, oh, all of us are doing slightly different silly things. But when it comes to actually figuring out stuff, we use the non-religious versions. And that right. waters down the 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 worst methods when you have them all mm -hmm. in the same room and sh yeah. highlights the one good one that's working. That's why I say I have like the different religions in the same right. room. And at terrible. this point, I'd like to recommend a book by Carl Sagan to everybody. He's called oh. a, a Demon Haunted World, mm. Science as a Candle in the Dark. Yes. Uh, it, it changed my life. It's it's the book that, one of the books that made me come out about my atheism after well, 30 good. years in the atheist closet, as it were. Shoot. Well, that's important. Thank you for recommending yeah, that. Sure. Um, but yeah, changing in plans, I don't like it either. In fact, even when our job, um, we might change projects frequently because we are a center that changes uh, priorities very quickly. And it can cause a lot of strife. It can cause a lot of discontent. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, people will work on something yeah. really hard and then all of a sudden there's a new change plans. Together. Yeah, goes over here now. <laughs> and he, yeah, exactly. You're like, oh yeah, now nah, we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. And you're just like, oh, all right, fine. Starting from square one again. I, do you think one of the problems with change is that you feel like you're losing progress? Is it like a sunk cost fallacy, or is it like what do you? Think? I would think uh, that's a lot of it, you know. But it's, sometimes it feels like you've got the rug pulled out from under you that mm. you've been working on a goal and you're making plans and. And then all of a sudden the, the goal is over here instead of over there. And you've got to rethink thinking is hard sometimes. Well, thinking is hard. Yeah. Especially if, if, if it takes a lot of thought to get to your goal and then you find out that your goal is different. Now you've got to rethink a whole lot of stuff. What I hope um, though, is you change your plan when you have a better target or you have a better goal. Right. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. that's one of the begrudging ways that I can always rationalize why it's good to have a change in plans because the new target is worth more worthwhile than the old one in fact if i were to say no i'm not going to change yeah. my plan and keep sticking to that old one i would adopt too conservative of a mindset or i mm -hmm. might be left behind as right. progress changes and i might be driving my yeah. old rickety car and, compared to the yeah. new thing that i got you know and as you get closer to your goal you may find out that that goal isn't what isn't worth what you thought it was. It, it maybe right. you've seen past that goal now, uh, yeah. and you can see a new goal that's much more worthy of your time and energy. Yes, Larry, it's exactly like, in my opinion, um, I was, and this is this is a small this is a small story, but I once was at this is when vaping was becoming popular, and uh -huh. I thought to myself, oh, and it doesn't have nicotine. Maybe I'll try out vaping one day. And they had a, a demo unit at a mall, and I was like, that looks so cool. But in the back of my head, I had a little alarm going. like, you don't want, your lungs are meant for air. They're not meant for antifreeze that's been aerosolized. <laughs> Probably yeah. glycol that you're just mm. breathing in. Like, your lungs are made for air. Don't do it. And I had the biggest regret because I thought, man, I'm a young guy. I can bounce back from it. But the idea of- Habits like, are not that easily broken. Right. The things yeah. that you can crave at the moment may not be the things that you want to crave far future down the road sure. and i'm so glad mm -hmm. that i haven't adopted like a terrible you know chemical addiction on something or just some bad habit or put my health at risk just for the sake of looking cooler you know because there's absolutely other ways to cooler, right i changed my plans in that moment and i went to something else yeah. so i wanted god now here's the here's the crux we are a religious show what if mm -hmm. god looks at the world looks at earth he is he is planning on destroying the world on monday but like he looks at the world and he's like you know what this isn't working out as well as i wanted it to and i really do care about the people here i'm going to change my plans a little bit <laughs> it's time for a change of plans in fact when you think about it jesus was a change of plans in, in its own right right like so he he has been or a plan change of plans he's he's made some planned updates to his his uh, uh, philosophy or his practice. Theoretically, yeah. And that's theory, according right? to the story. Right? <laughs> so uh, for the better, and some would say from the much, much worse, but the whole idea is if he's willing to change his plans and try something new, why not try again 
And then what would you be looking for if God said, hey, listen, I I want to have a heart to heart with you. I love you very much. Uh, I'm God. Um, I want to change my plans for how I'm, I'm, I'm approaching this whole I'm God, you're not God, immortal, moral situation. What what would then this one to one? What would it take for me to have a better way of reaching out to you, and then I can format that into my plan. A better relationship. Yeah, I want to have a better relationship with well, you. Well, he could show up. Forward. That would be a start. <laughs> <laughs> you could show up, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard to have a relationship with someone you can't talk to or see. Yeah, uh, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? No, okay. I, I saw a meme early this morning, uh, yeah. and it said it's funny that uh, the religious don't trust science and don't think science is true or valid and all this stuff. Yeah. But as soon as they say that there's a there's a eclipse coming, oh well, that's the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you know, know. And, and they jump right on it, no questions asked. You know, we're having an eclipse Monday. They yeah. trust it. Right. It pains me because I see people, even who I work out with on a regular basis, really, really nice people who uh -huh. are fully indoctrinated, who will say things like uh, tornadoes are manufactured by humans. They'll say things like that. It's like, oh, I say like, oh, the weather's looking bad. We had a tornado warning at work. It's like, don't worry. Tornadoes are made by the government. <laughs> they say, no, they I haven't heard that. Like that. But. <laughs> don't even get them started on vaccines but like yeah. it's all rooted on the fact that they have a very poor epistemology yeah. in terms of determining I, what's true and what's not yeah true, right? i think I, I read recently that tennessee that the house is maybe it was the senate has passed a, a resolution banning con contrails when tennessee yeah tennessee i'm pretty sure it was tennessee now Did that pass? if it i think it passed the house or the sun, whichever one originated it. Uh, but can you so, imagine if it came law? Yeah. And they started really shutting so down airlines. Yeah. On yeah. That so basis? Airspace across Tennessee is like, yeah. what? That wait until the they start shutting down military flights. That's yeah. what I want yeah, yeah, to yeah. see. Yeah. You know, the, so there's two things about that. One is it's sad when people who at a young age were never taught how to tell true things from false things grow up into adults who don't know how to tell true things from right. false things. Mm -hmm. You don't just intuitively understand that you have to be no. trained and 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 disciplined to think how to how to think effectively, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. But then to become an adult whose job is to pass legislation and instead of passing meaningful legislation, we are wasting time on 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 this low level of argumentation on contrails and conspiracy theories. Like if I have potholes up and down the roads, I'm sure in Knoxville, there's some really bad roads and your government bodies are, in, are instead of addressing those are thinking, well, how tall was Bigfoot? Five and a half feet or five and six inches feet? Five and six inches. How dare you say five and a half feet? And that's all they're arguing about. You're mm -hmm. thinking like, you guys aren't even doing your jobs. You're literally not doing your jobs, which is being in service of the people and making sure that things work, that there's water. Right. That's what's happening in Washington these days uh, you know, with the Republicans uh, in the House because they just lock down everything. They don't do anything. They, their their main goal is to, to what, stumpify the works of the Democratic Party and mm -hmm. the president and try to impeach him. Why? Retribution right. over Trump. And right. it just it locks our, our country down. We cannot do anything, can't pass mm -hmm. laws that need to be passed. Right, 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 right. Uh and I know I know oh, here, I'll, I'll I'll go into this because we do need a change of plans even for like politics, right? But like the idea of you know, if we go back two hundred years, things were a lot probably a lot more cordial, but the quality of life in America was substantially worse for the majority of the people that lived here. The majority of different kinds of people. What period here. are you talking about? I'm All talking about black people for women, for immigrants. No, I mean, immigrants. period of time. 200 years ago, 40 oh, okay. years ago, you know, like you, you go back long. It's not pretty much the entire history of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always say there's a joke that you probably haven't heard. But if a black guy had a time machine, they would never go in the past. The the, <laughs> the movie with the black guy with the time machine is like, I'm not using it. I don't want to go back to the past. You want me to go back to the 1960s? Oh, you, you know, know that the 1960s next 1960s of black next people? No. No, you I'm not going to get out of the time machine. No, you know get the out next of Time Lord is supposed to be black. Oh, really? In Doctor <laughs> Who? Okay, yeah. I'll be interested for yeah. it. I'll be interested. <laughs> in it. All right, all right. We'll so see. the The whole idea is, um, 
it's not a fact of how cordial or discordial the 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 conversations are in Washington. The more of it is, in my opinion, of like how interested are we getting people in understanding how our system works and how it could be beneficial to us. Because right now there's a lot of fear between administrative roles, it's particularly in government, and our, po our policing and our politics and how that affects us on a daily basis when these are services that should be in favor and in the interest of people. And if, the more we educate people at the ground level, I know it takes time, but the more we educate people on how these systems are supposed to work for us, the more we can get people in those positions to continue to work for them. Because I'm not saying every police guy's bad or every politician's bad. There's definitely people who are who are there who wanted to be there who sure. dreamed, uh, and do the good, good do change. the right job. Uh -huh. We need to empower those people, and and we can only do that by being well informed and expressing yeah. ourselves accurately when people are doing good things, and not just oh that's my team member. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna support that team member. It's always bizarre because I have like a neighbor who has a. I support the police blue line flag and a don't tread on me flag on either side of his home. And I keep driving by and I think I think to myself, you know, the first people who are going to tread on you are the people who get paid to tread on people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that guy. It's that flag is going to do the thing that the other flag says you're going to do. So, like, what are you yeah. really saying? What yeah. are you really saying? Well, yeah, what gets me is when I see like Trump on the stage talking about all this. Oh, racial and stuff and and uh evangelical stuff and and i see police officers behind him i'm not just talking about uniformed police officers i'm talking about the higher echelons the the leaders the the chief of police you know the, that type of thing behind him supporting him for that kind of thing yeah and it just it it really worries me yeah no 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 it's true too uh the the main the main thing I would say is like for a change of plans in that regard, if I were, if we were to talk to, if I were to say what my change of plan would be for God, if you were to come to me, isn't so much the idea of like, uh, show up. It'd be nice if he did. It'd be nice if he did. But also I would say maybe even more importantly is recognize that we're capable of coming up with these, obs com coming up with observations for ourselves and give us some level of autonomy to, to work this out. Because what happens when, you come in as a God and say, I know everything that's good. I know everything in the universe. I can do anything. And then I disappear is that people will, will, will not apply critical thought to their own actions and just simply say, well, my ambiguous relationship with this God justifies all the actions that I'm doing as a result. And so when because I'm actually, it says so in that book, because it says so in that book. And because even when I'm actually doing something harmful, I don't have to evaluate that because mm -hmm. I'm doing what's ascribed to me by this God. Whereas yeah, if God well, said, go ahead. Well, I was saying, whereas if God said, Hey, listen, I'm leaving this up to you. You guys need to make sure that you take your care of yourself. Well, and if you find good systems of behavior and, and, and law and ethics and morals, and you came up with it, that's just as good as if I came up with it, but I need you to make sure that you're constantly testing them out and thinking about better ways to improve them. Continuous improvement always. All right. See you guys later. Like, even if it was that, I'd be like, well, it's not as much feedback as I wanted, but he did validate that we can come up with better systems and now we can actually test them. And we might find better ways of treating people than what's just given to us in the Bible. Yeah, it would have been nice if he had said that. The thing, about it, <laughs> the thing about it is in the book, he says pretty much everything that can be said. So it turns out to be a Rorschach test. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do bad, there's stuff to support it. If you want to do good, there's stuff to support it. It really tells you more about the person reading it than the book itself. Sure but there's so much bad stuff in the book, you know, like God giving plagues to 40,000 people because this person didn't take a sentence. You know, that is just wanton evil. It's just, you know, this, but so many people just ignore that part. Right. Those parts. I'll also say one last thing, I guess, before we get to our break, but like progress tends to skew towards progression, progressive thinking or or liberal thinking mm -hmm. and there's the 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 counterculture in the US specifically is one where it's just an issue of exposure small towns small rural towns with their own their chief of police with few people who all very much look the same have the same ideas have the same thoughts have the same look outlook maybe even professions and then big metropolis cities where different people have to work with each other 
who all look different, maybe have different cultures, different religions, different languages, different looks, different body types. And those people are populating way faster than the rural people. And those people in those bigger cities are slowly looking for cheaper places to live and are infusing themselves into like the Plus more- the, the outer possible. outskirts of those cities are growing as well. It's right. like you could you could say the entire East Coast and West Coast of America are one big megapolis, you know, because it, you never really go from city to city, go out in the country to before you get to the next city. That's it's true. just constant city all the way that's down. True. And, that's and true. that that's moving inwards as they expand and right. big cities are, are growing. The I'm universities seeing it in are growing. I'm seeing mm -hmm. it in Tennessee. And so I think the only issue we need to fight against is gerrymandering, but for the most part. Uh, we are seeing the culture shift, the cultural shift towards more people are realizing, oh, people are different. That's fine. Yeah. What else I got to do? Well, the thing about it is in the big cities, you you interact with those people, yes. uh, people that are different from you. And you realize that they're, they're good people. Yeah. Uh, when you live in a small town out in the middle of Podunk, Texas or something, you you don't interact with them. Or if you do, you, you have so many pre- uh, prejudgments against those people that you see them as bad even before you get to know them. It's, exactly. It's you know, we we in the we in the city are learning to live with each other where it's it's hard to do that in the, in the countryside. Yeah, I would say grow up in the city, retire in the country, <laughs> rather than the other way around. Yeah, it's yeah, but of... leave your driving habits behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're at the bottom of that. Okay. Yes. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dr. Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, Werner. 22nd year now, have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high-top tables, or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online at Facebook, meetup.com, or go to our website at knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start, Start one. one. All right. Well, Bat, what are you going to pick up? You know, uh, I'd feel remiss if I didn't talk about the end of the world. But just before that, I wanted to say we did have an April Fool's Day this last week. And isn't it, is it any loss of irony on the religious sector that April Fool's occurs immediately after Easter? <laughs> I, I I don't think they would recognize they're two different things compartmentalization they're just completely different holidays don't worry about them like mm -hmm. so they were it's like finally Jesus has risen from the dead and the next day is gotcha gotcha <laughs> gotcha 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 yeah. it just seems so bizarre that those two holidays are like right smack down well but, you know they I'm sure they think that uh, April 1st uh, April Fool's Day is just a man-made holiday it has nothing to do with you know, the truth of the religion. The irony, though, because everything, every holiday is a man-made holiday. There's no special thing about holidays. It's just a planet spiraling through space. Anyway. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of blasphemy, mm -hmm. uh, the end of the world is apparently going to happen on April 8th. This is brought in by a number of our viewers. And they yep. said, ancient Star Wars Monday. says, Jesus wow. was supposedly originally going to draft a bunch of folks to heaven in his lifetime, but he forgot about that. So it's been another 2000 years and now he's finally going to do it. I can't wait to see him forget about it again this year, but don't worry. Christian's got his back. They'll surely cover up for him and like, and act like he never made that promise at all. He's going to do it some days. What they all say. Can't wait to see him fail again tomorrow. Can't wait for God <laughs> to find out his son has been lacking. He's probably not going to do much about it though, since you know, it's him. Yeah, you're talking about change, God never changing his mind. Well, he changed his mind big time between the first, the first, the Old Testament and the New. I mean, he can play. He he turned his whole personality around from just punishing everybody unless they make sacrifices to him to forgiving everybody and saying right. it's all good. You know, just believe in my son. And then, of course, if he's in control of everything, then he's ultimate responsible 
for killing his son. Right. And of course, there is no such thing as death, so he didn't really die. Right. If he didn't really die, how could he die for your sins? No, it's just, a big game of peekaboo. It's yeah, a big it game is. of peekaboo. It's just, yeah. uh, I'm dead. Yeah. No, I'm not. Ha ha. Yeah. Worship <laughs> me forever now, guys. Like, yeah. the, the more you play peekaboo with kids, the better a driver they'll be. And I say this, really? <laughs> object <laughs> permanence that. is super important because when a car, if you're at an intersection and a car drives past the view of a car, you in your brain, you're like, that car is going to stay parked because he knows he's about to drive into a road, right? But when that car leaves and that car is halfway driving to the street, you're like, don't you realize there's still traffic behind the car? Just because you didn't see traffic because you had your view blocked didn't mean that there wasn't traffic behind the car. What are you doing? Kids need to play peekaboo more. Parents need to play peekaboo more with their kids. And I think if you did it well enough, people will be like, wait a second. Jesus just died to the God who controls life and death. Isn't that just basically like putting a Dixie cup over him? And then putting it back over again, like I don't understand how important the sacrifice was because it wasn't really a sacrifice. Right. It was literally a guy going like, "I got your ear, no, I got your nose. It's here. <laughs> oh, it's back on your face again." Yeah. And we're all like, "Whoa, this guy really loves me." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's just death is just a change of address, you know, it's, as far as Christianity. If you already goes. own the entire universe, yeah, most it? most religions, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, you know, the problem is, is this, we extend this to Christianity, but it also extends to Islam because then God changed his mind three times, right? right. Mm -hmm. Every single time you have a new prophet, whether it's Mormon, you know, Islam. Yeah. And not only, it's and a, what about the Hadiths that come later? You know, yeah. the, the books you're, that the new guys write, you know, and the old guy. You're not getting rid of the problems. You're just adding a new layer to the cake of problems, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, if the first layer of the cake is gravel, you know? It's still a bad cake. <laughs> no matter how many layers you put on top of it. True that. All right. So uh, speaking of the world ending, um, mm -hmm. there was another commenter. His name is Max Musamare, who said, I dropped the H-bomb on my insane Christian relatives today. And he said, they were talking about the magic apocalypse warnings for Monday, including the eclipse. Uh -huh. Just as a heads up. Uh -huh. And then they said, and the eclipse is also a very popular topic. Uh, they then they segued into anti-immigrants, anti-gay diatribes. And I say, I said this to them. Sounds like you're in a deep well of selfishness and hate. That's the H-bomb. It's almost as if the world is moving closer to love while Christians are getting left behind. Capital left behind, by the way. Uh -huh. and selfishness. Hmm. Well, that's so true. I hadn't heard it put so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing about leaving people behind, though, is that the mechanisms that are that exist to leave people behind are, how do I put it, the the same sort of disinterest. Oh, how do I put it? Like it's it's hard to make people want to care about being more empathetic and and being more responsible with how they think and then can condone their actions. I know it's definitely hard, and we don't want to force everybody to do it, but. When we say as callously uh, uh, that, ah, we can leave people behind, that's sort of the same attitude that Christians have on those who have actually went through the effort to 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 learn how to better be or learn the consequences of their actions, learn about rationalizing the truth. And so you can't have two completely uncaring parties looking at each other, just being like, ah, they're going to hell. Ah, those guys are crazy. Like s somewhere there was, needs to be a bridge that can be built. And... I understand the the impetus on someone who's saying, you know, I don't think gay people and immigrants are that bad of people. I'm just going to not listen to you. I understand that, but like I feel the the better way of of handling that kind of conversation alongside maybe what you said would be also to demonstrate that there are good examples and like when you see good immigrants in 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 leadership or on TV or in sports or as actors Put them on a pedestal and recognize them. And that way, those who always try to dismiss their contributions to society will begin to slowly lose that expectation. Because uh, if, if this is a if this is a tangent, I just wanted to say, like, when when you don't when you put people in a box, the best way of getting them out is to put them on a billboard instead. Like if, and and show like, hey, if you think black people only do X, Y, Z, 
let me show you other examples of them in actors. Let me put them in Doctor Who. Let me put them in sports. Let me have them sure. elected as president. And now you think like, oh, okay, maybe my idea of them was a little viewed because now they do these all these other things. Like the power of pop culture is super yeah. good. Like, so well, like during the, the – since we're all immigrants pretty much yeah, except absolutely. the Native Indians. Well, we're not, uh, the, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. black people their families are immigrate here. But I mean but yes. every time somebody does something like win an Olympics, you know, you can say – this is Charles Smith. He's his parents immigrated from Germany. You know, these yes. are, this is so and so. His parents immigrated from Ireland. Right, you know, and on and on and on. Just you know, we're all the right. descendants of, of immigrants. So that's at some it's point. The, it's the power of sports when you do that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, for example, very in Tennessee, I have seen like the most red hat conservative people wearing a McHolmes uh, jersey. And I thought to myself, like, this guy is sporting the jersey of a black man that he really likes. Like, you would never, sports is the only thing capable of getting people to see a whole bunch of different color people from different sizes, tall and short, play a game together and cheer for, like, the black people. <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. They, they turn around and jeer the other team. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just like. It's but no it's, longer it's about color. The They're just like thinking yeah. about the, the teams that they're on. It's, yeah, well, it's such I'm, a human condition tapping. Yeah, talking about it. we're all immigrants, if we go back far enough in time, like 15, 20,000 years ago, even Native Indians were immigrants from uh, the Asian East where they yeah. came across the land bridge there mm. and immigrated into America. So but it's, nobody but it's was... A, oh, I just want to say, like, uh, we're not all immigrants. Some people were brought here against their will. And that's, that's not true. That's so true, like, too. We did come from different places, but not everybody's immigrant. And I just want to highlight that it just means that everyone's different, right? And mm -hmm. like we should be valuing that the fact that, hey, everybody's different. Everyone has a different story. We don't need to generalize everybody into one group. People are different. Deal with it and learn right. <clears> from <throat> different cultures and different yeah. what they have to celebrate say. the, the differences. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's uh, like if you were watching TV and every show was the same story, how boring would that be? Right. But, you know, everybody's got a different story, you know, celebrate the differences. Yes. And change up your plans every now and then. It wouldn't hurt either. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we had an, an eclipse or um, has the eclipse happen already, Larry? No, tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh, man. So that's the, on the day that ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now One I'm day left. All right. So the idea that we were able to pinpoint the timing of that eclipse, because I think like we're all fairly confident that's going to happen. Yep. Sort of like makes me feel um, proud that science has gotten so good that it can pinpoint accurate like when sure. mm -hmm. these events would happen. And I just wish that people were able to recognize that, you know, when the Bible gets things wrong and it has gone things wrong many times and science is always so. like, <laughs> when science is always like, actually uh, take this pill and it'll make your headache go away. Or, this is the right. This is the right button to hit to stop your car, or this fabric is going to be good when you re let go of a rock hold and it, you need to come down on the audible a system. Or if you cut yourself, put this chemical on it. It's going to disinfect the wound and you'll still have your arm afterwards. Or if you need to have birth, go to this doctor. Or if there's an eclipse, stand in this one spot at this time of day and you'll be there. Like science is constantly giving out prophecies. Yeah, that constantly. are accurate and work. Mm -hmm. Why have we never had the book of science? <laughs> why, <laughs> why aren't people like invested in this? Because the low key advertisement of just, I feel like we take it for granted that science is right, unless oh, yeah. if it contradicts our religious point of view. Now yeah. it's suddenly, well, even the religious, uh, you know, are planning for an eclipse to happen tomorrow. They don't question it. It's not something to say, it's not going to be an eclipse tomorrow. You know, right. science is wrong. Right. You know? On a certain level, they just they do respect science. They they do respect what it can do. Yeah, I think at a deep level, they want their religious views to be scientific, or if they just have a low understanding what scientific. Oh yeah, is, how many times? How many times you see a, a person get on the side? Scientists have found it that uh, clue that the ark landed here, you know, yeah. or that the uh, the cave had uh, the cave in it. Our, is where is it? believe i can't remember the name of the country turkey no. is it hungry the uh, the mountains of hungary where jesus lived oh. israel okay israel yeah, i was gonna say boston yeah it's i'm 70, almost ask. 74 years old i have trouble with names 
names of countries even, but Israel, they'll say that, you know, scientists have discovered a, a cave in Israel where Jesus was, you know, they, they grab this uh, reputation that, that science has and try to bring it into religion to justify it. Right. right, uh, right. So, and then they turn right around and says, just science don't know anything. Right. You know, when, when they say that something in the Bible is wrong. Right. And science is wrong. And that's when it's not science anymore. That's when you can't claim mm-hmm. any of it. Once you right. start saying it's only right when it confirms my point of view and it's wrong when it doesn't confirm my point of view, now you can't use any of science because that is not science anymore. Now it's cherry picking and that's mm-hmm. not the scientific process. In fact, science is all about understanding when you're wrong just as much as figuring out how to be right. You know, right. And if you're not using it for both those things, you're no longer using the scientific method. You can't just use science to make yourself feel better. It's for you to figure out how to be right. And that's all there mm-hmm. is to it. I do feel yeah. like it's scary because when I was a Christian, I would compartmentalize how I approached my scientific journey. Cause I was a scientist. I mean, I was a Christian all the way until my first or second year of undergrad. So like I, I was really good in high school, yeah. good in my first two years of college learning biochemistry. Like I'm mm-hmm. learning about, you know, how you carry out some DNA works and my entire mind is like, God is so amazing. Oh uh-huh. man, I can't wait to tell my how he, friends how he about drove it. evolution. It's like, yeah, like <laughs> I, where's the creator in all this process? We should rephrase this book. Like it's really great. And I realized at a certain point, like, you know, started putting two and two together. Well, it was really the, the ethics and morals class that hit me because mm. I thought I knew what morality was. I knew science like left and right, like, but I didn't remember what was questioned on my ethics because in my opinion, ethics was just what was given to me by God. Like God's, version of science and all the science in my book was just the how of what he did and whereas my bible was the why of what sure. he did and i mm-hmm. could just i could literally match those two together but mm-hmm. when you took me out of science put me into like the more softer areas of of human reasoning like f- ethics morality I'm, and mm-hmm. law i'm like oh but i know this too because it's just the how and the why and i actually have the book of the why and if we're just going to talk about the why i'm just going to hold up my bible and just be like it's these verses it's these verses and then i realize, oh man these verses are actually inadequate for how to properly conduct a society or right. the mm-hmm. explanations i'm getting from the bible aren't as satisfying compared to what these philosophers have said and reasoned out and like can even mathematically prove are accurate like it's way better to take a balanced point of view of how to treat people, not just uh, treat, people, treat people the way how you want to be treated. Sometimes it's good to treat people the way how other people or they want to be treated and have a balance of the two. And you'll need more complicated rules for more nuanced situations moving on in the future. I'm like, that makes sense to me. I'm looking at the Bible. And I'm like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll stop reading. Well, these let me let me ask you a question. Sure. Uh, in your first couple of years of biochemistry and all that, uh, yeah. you were you were really into science, but you're also a believing Christian. Uh, Christianity says that uh, basically it says that evolution didn't happen. I mean, God created man, you know, from dust. Yeah. But how are you reconciling that with what you were learning in biology without I mean, outside of the moral quest. Absolutely. It was a a series of phases and it was whatever I could do to keep clinging onto the religion. Mm Because at first I said, evolution is not real. And I had that point of view, like up until middle school, until the evidence was just so great. And the, I think being black was really important for my understanding of science. Because when people tend to talk about God's point of view and God's religion and like, here's the plan. And they show pictures. It's always like a white guy. Like my Bible had a picture of a white Jesus on it. Sure. Like perfectly mm-hmm. manicured face. And when he <clears> talked about his people, it was a picture of a bunch of white people in Jerusalem. And when he's like, here are the slaves that escaped from Egypt. And it's just a bunch of blonde haired dudes moving from one place to another place. I'm like, well, it doesn't, I'm already so not. Distant. A focal point from this. Yeah. That's easier for me to just say, ah, it's not even about me to begin with. And I have to like do some gymnastics in my head. And then I got tired of the gymnastics. So when I heard about evolution, I'm like, that's not true to the point where I'm like, ah, it's probably true. And maybe the Bible's wrong just on these certain things, because who cares about yeah. these smaller details when it's really the bigger picture? Maybe it's an analogy. Yeah. I bifurcated yeah. the Bible into levels of importance. And I'm saying, as long as I still believe in God and that he did these things, it doesn't really matter about the finer details. Maybe no one's yeah. really got it. But then I learned about something called embryo uh, endosymbiosis theory, which is like, you have a cell that is originally used to be two different organisms, but then they fused. And now that's the reason why you have mitochondria and your nucleus that has DNA inside of every cell. And your mitochondria has its own DNA 
because it used to be its own little animal. But then your your body was like, we need to evolve these two things together because mitochondria do really useful things and make energy. And if we have that as our cell, we can have basically a power battery. And But it has its own DNA. And you're like, what? That's weird. And then when you look at plants, they have chloroplasts, mitochondria, and their own nuclei where they have DNA. So it's three different things fused together. They're actually more genetically complicated than we are as people. And wow. that's why plants can do this weird thing where like you can take an arm off of apple tree and put it on a pear tree and then that pear tree starts making apple pears fusions together and you're like why can't humans do that it's like because they're not as complex as plants and i'm like oh i thought we were special it's like yeah. no they have three you have to deal with it and i thought to myself that's so matter of fact that's so true but it's so so much cooler than anything i've ever <laughs> learned in the bible that i'm like you know the facts are far more fascinating than the fiction and I started to like, it started to peel back. And that's part of evolution too. You're like, yeah, yeah. germ theory and all this other stuff. And you're like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, evolution, you're super cool. <laughs> I want to yeah. learn more about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you seem to be answering way more cool things than I am right. getting from the Bible. And at that point yeah. with the morality class, it was the last kick I needed sure. to really be like. Do we have any more listener comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I always love talking about the journey. Oh, yes. The journey to reason. Here's the last listener comment. It's coming to us by Frasian Breed. You know, Christians think atheism is all about bashing God. What do you guys think about that? He does have some additional comments. I feel it's just the whole idea of the supernatural being creating and controlling the universe that doesn't resonate with atheists and not necessarily about hating or having a vendetta with God. I think atheism, is what he says, is really about... Uh, a the the unease with the supernatural being creating and controlling the universe which doesn't resonate with atheists and it's not necessarily about hating or having a vendetta against any god what do you think about well i think first of all that person needs to realize that 90 percent of all atheists out there used to be believers mm. i mean it's not like we just when we come along we don't believe we hear about god and we reject it that's I not want, the case i want to be fair to this person he isn't he is an atheist he's think he's expressing that as an atheist i feel like my christian friends only think that atheism is oh. about bashing god and and they think that's okay funny. yeah i can't it. i can't tell you how many times uh believers tell me that i hate god <laughs> uh you know and the a lot of times just the opening question in our conversation is what happened to you that made you turn against god like that yeah nothing nothing yeah. happened to me we I was reasoned out of an unreasonable position. Uh, it happened in college in my first year. You know, there was nothing bad happened to me. Um, you know, I, I asked a lot of questions and got a lot of answers, and the answers that I got from religion just didn't stack up. And I eventually lost my faith because it wasn't supported. Hmm. And it's funny that you say that your diversion really started with a uh, moralities class. Yeah. Basically yep. yeah. there's a, there's a guy who has a really good series of how he became a non-Christian, how he lost his Christianity, a YouTube series called why I'm no longer a Christian. And it's by a guy named evidence three. Hmm. If you spell evidence with the last, last E being a three, <laughs> that's his name. So I recommend okay everybody who wants to who studies these deconversions from re, from christianity to atheism he he is one of the best He's got a good series of of uh, videos out there larry the conversion stories are always interesting but i also want to say that it's never one thing because it's oh. really the environment of being at a university with a lot of different people the 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 environment of being on my own living on right. my own and not having like my mom tell me what to like wear right. or make food for me. Like I'm cooking mm -hmm. for myself. I'm living for myself. I'm paying my own rent. I'm living without the boundaries that were provided around me. And I'm in a different ecosystem where people care about thinking and working right. with different people. Mm -hmm. I feel like that university platform is really good. And you see a, a lot, a lot of people mm -hmm. fade out of their religions, Islamic, mm -hmm. uh, very strong progressives, like very mm -hmm. strong conservatives, just sort of like ease a little well, bit. Well, you're, you're learning all this new stuff. I mean, yeah. and, and a lot yeah. of it challenges the stuff that you learn growing up Yep. and, and you're being given that information by people who know people right. who uh, have discovered it for themselves, done the experiments as it were right. and have written them papers and, or books 
about these subjects. They're very knowledgeable. Yeah. They have the answers that you, when your questions bubble up naturally as they will yeah. in these classes, yeah. they can tell you why. Yeah, because they've been doing nothing but answering those same questions year after year, yeah, right? For years. Mm -hmm. And Christianity sort of like, in my opinion, having a, um, a car with three wheels. And you can get by with a car with three wheels, you know? But what college is is sort of like a racetrack. And you realize, oh, man, this car with three wheels isn't enough for me to bend and curve and do all these extra moves. So you'll need to upgrade your car. And for some people, it's more of an upgrade than others. But what you really end up with is a much more structured car. And when you look at your car again, that has all four wheels and all mm -hmm. these new preventive measures on it, you're like, that's not Christianity anymore. Where is that? It's like, that's what your car was before someone took a wheel off. And it's like, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, wait a second. This is way better. And though you go back to your family's like, what? what happened to your fancy uh, three wheel cars? Like, I put my wheel back on, mom. That's what happened. Anyway. Yeah. I had a change of plans. <laughs> no, I, I certainly recommend that anybody who can go to college. Uh, well, not only will it, it make you question your previous knowledge and stuff, but it will teach you how to do the research that you need to do go after college. Yeah. It, the best benefit I ever got from college was learning how to do the research. Right. And once college is over and you have your degree, you, you still have that skill and it will carry you through the rest of your life. Yeah, here's a here's a last hot take. Don't go to a Christian college. Don't go to an online college if you can afford if you can afford otherwise. Go to even like your local public community college that just has a lot of different people available to you. You're mm -hmm. going to learn the same stuff. You'll right. get the same degree more or less at the end of the day, but you'll have the infusion of working with a lot of different people. That's the value of school and scholastics is the networking and the compatibility work that you'll do with many different people who are not like you. That's the true education, in my opinion. Right. And uh, if you get that, that that makes the whole journey worth it, in my opinion. All right, that's it yep. for me. That's it for three, 361, I think it is. 361. Um, yeah, no, 362. This was change of plans, 362. Sweet. So we got three, three more episodes. All right. All right. Looking forward to them. It's going to yes. be good. We're going to make yeah. them a blast, guys. Where can we find your stuff? Let's chat on YouTube.com. And you can not only find all these other previous shows, but you can also find some of my, uh, uh, what is it, S Street Socratics, uh, where I sit down and talk to people about stuff, yeah. about what they mm -hmm. believe. It's yeah. good stuff. You might find some music on there, too, in the future. Just letting you know. I make some music, too. That's Sounds going. good. And you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Yep. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. My content, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my book, uh, Atheism, What's It All About, is available on Amazon. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, Ty. Bye, Ty. See you later. Bye-bye.